Welcome to Live United, a show that explores how, when community partnerships are formed and when people work together, lives are enriched and changed for the better. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Milton Little, president of United Way of Metropolitan Atlanta, and I am the host of Live United. Look around, and it's hard to ignore the signs of today's economic challenges. We all know about the record unemployment and high housing foreclosure rates in Georgia and all across the nation. Last year in Georgia, more than 1.2 million families experienced some kind of financial hardship. 1.2 million families, each one of them struggling to make ends meet. 1.2 million families is the equivalent of the entire population of Fulton County and Clayton County combined. More people than ever are in need of another chance, a true fresh start. This past summer, a lifeline was cast in the state of Georgia through the Georgia Fresh Start Program. Funded by the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009, the Fresh Start Program provided one-time crisis assistance payments for past due utility and housing bills for qualified families. The top three needs were rent, mortgage, and electricity. This program was like no other in Georgia and took a massive effort to implement statewide. An effort of this magnitude had not been seen in our state since 2005 during Hurricane Katrina. While the Georgia Fresh Start program has been a welcome sign of relief for many hardworking families, it has equally shown a glaring light on the degree of need plaguing our community. September 30th marked the official end of the Fresh Start program. The budget for the program, originally projected at $10 million, doubled to more than $20 million due to the overwhelming need. As of November 30th, nearly 17,000 Georgia families received emergency financial assistance, totaling $20.5 million. The Georgia Fresh Start program represented a unique partnership between nonprofits, government and faith-based groups, and the private sector. And here to speak to us today is one of United Way's long-standing partners who played a key role in administering the Fresh Start program throughout the state, Major James Seiler of the Salvation Army. And also joining us today is Joyce Ann Warren of Newton, Georgia. Welcome, Major Seiler, and welcome, Ann. Hello. Thanks for being Thank here today. You. Thank you. Major Siler, let's start with you. Lots of people know about the Salvation Army, but, but it wouldn't hurt to uh, just give a one-minute explanation of what the Salvation Army does. Every you day. know, it's so interesting. As you say, folks see us at Christmas time with the bell or perhaps a truck comes to their house and picks some items up. Uh, most folks don't realize we run a shelter in downtown Atlanta where somewhere around 300 people will spend the night tonight. We operate eight core community centers, outreach centers to local communities, four boys and girls clubs around Metro Atlanta. So there's a diverse programming that takes place all year long. So how'd you get involved in this Fresh Start program? Well, the Salvation Army uh, deals with folks uh, who are in need all year long. And so we were excited to hear that there would be some additional resources available for uh, folks who come to us in an hour of need. And that's what the Fresh Start program represented. Our funds are much more limited than, we, than the Fresh Start funds were, and so it enabled us to provide multiple months of rent or utilities where most of the time we're limited to just one. Oh, great. And Ann, how did you find out about this Fresh Start program? Where were you and, and how did you hear about it? Well, um, I clean houses for a living, and I, because of the economy, had lost most of my houses. And I had got behind on my lot rent. I own my trailer, but pay lot rent. Got behind on some other bills, and basically, I was at the point I was fixing to lose, lose my home. I was fixing to be evicted, which means I can't move my trailer. I would lose it. Um, I was thinking about having to give my kids to my sister, even though she don't have room, but she'd take them in, and me living in my in my vehicle. Um, and I, I happened to be at the Salvation Army trying to get some assistance, and overheard somebody say fresh start and I was like what is this fresh start and so they told me about it and talked to the to the um, people at, at Salvation Army they're like yeah they gave me the pamphlet had me fill it out got all the information in and I was in shock you know I'm like wow this is a program that can really help me. Well, what kind of help did you get? 
Well, I got, um, they paid up my lot rent, which was very behind, I mean way behind. Um, paid my propane, um, paid, paid my electric, which was by, very behind too. Um, I mean, they just, I, I got almost the to top amount you could get. And I was so in shock because nobody gives that amount of money. I mean, when, when they told me that I could get this and I'm going to cry, I was crying because I couldn't believe it. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I mean, because literally days, they were going to kick me out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, somebody saved me. Must have been a tough time for you and your family. It's a very tough time. It's a very tough time. And how many kids do you have? Well, I have four, but two live with me. My older two are on their own. So, um, you know, I have to worry about my little ones. They're 10 and 11. And, you know, it, it's hard. It's hard when you're a single parent. And, you know, you worry about them. They and just, I, I didn't want to lose them, you know. No, no one ever wants to, yeah. to lose anything so precious. Yes. Major Siler, you hear stories like this often? I do. That, and that's what the motivation to, for us to keep doing what we're doing. Uh, and that's, that's the important part. Uh, the most efficient and effective way to deal with homelessness is to avoid it altogether. And so that's why the Fresh Start program was so very helpful. It, it gave families like this and folks all across the metro area and all across the state the ability to stay in, their, in the place and, and with the least amount of disruptions. What kind of uh, needs are people coming to you with? Uh, some of the same things. Mm -hmm. uh, folks who have been unemployed for such a long period of time, we've never experienced some of the, the high levels of unemployment with the high length of unemployment that we're experiencing now. And so uh, that wreaks havoc in families uh, when somebody's out of work that long. I mean, they both they burn through savings, they charge up their credit cards, they do everything they can to avoid the inevitable. And in almost every case, they wait till too late to contact folks for, for help. And so in many cases, caseworkers are just hurrying, scurrying if they can to keep the lights on, to keep people in their homes. And we just, on a day-to-day -day basis, don't have those kind of resources. And you mentioned that you had uh, were cleaning houses, and, and some of those houses you weren't cleaning anymore. Were, were the people in the kind of situation that, that Major's talking about losing their job, or why couldn't they keep you on? Well, they they either got laid off, or their jobs, you know, just cut back on them. Um, you know, just things got tight for them, so I'm the first to go. Mm. You know, it makes it hard for both of us. Absolutely. You know, I, I had one lady crying because she had to let me go. So you actually found yourself having to think hard about whether you would send the two boys to yeah, your sister. Yeah, I was seriously, I, I had already talked to my sister and I was like, look, I know you don't have room, but will you take the boys? And she's like, yeah, I'll take the boys. What are you going to do? And I'm like, I'm going to live in my vehicle. You know, I don't have nothing else I can do. You don't have room for me and, you know, and she's like, okay. And you were lucky enough to overhear the words fresh yeah, start I just, at Salvation Yeah, I just heard I said, fresh start, what is that? The girl just started telling me. I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> mm. It's amazing. Yeah. So it's made a difference for you? Oh, it made a huge difference. I mean, it just a huge difference. It took a big weight off my shoulders. You came a long way today to talk to us about your story. Why, why was it important for you to do that? Well, I just want people to know that there's organizations out there that will help you. All you got to do is just put aside your pride and do what you got to do because if you're like me, you got to take care of your family, you know, and, and, it's, and it's hard. It's hard to do that, but there's people out there that will help you and that really love you even though they don't know you, you know. You just got to go out there and do it, and when you do, it's awesome. It's awesome to see what God does through people, you know? Yeah, that, that's, that's a wonderful way to, way to put it. You know, we hear often about agencies like yours that are seeing a different kind of person coming through the door because of this economic circumstance. Say a little bit about that. Some 40% of the people who came to the Salvation Army in 2010 have never come to the Salvation Army asking for help before. Folks who, in many cases, have been employed, they've, they've held their own jobs and taken care of their own families. 
who now find themselves unable to do so. We have a number of cases where donors have, uh, were donors last year who are coming now for assistance this year. Folks who, you know, were not uh, $10,000 a year donors, but sure. they were consistent supporters. The Salvation Army depends heavily on literally thousands of people who write $25 checks or $50 checks. We get them all the time. And these same folks are the ones who are coming to us and saying, not only can I not help you this year, I need some help of my own. That's a tough situation for a lot of people to be in. Absolutely. And you have another relationship with the Salvation Army. You were, you were saying earlier. Yes, um, I ring the bell. I do that at Christmas time and I really, really enjoy it. It's lots of fun. And to me, it's kind of a way I can kind of give back a little bit, you know? But it's, I, I like doing it and I will continue to do it as long as I can. You've got a great story, Ann. So, so you, you look out there um, to that television audience and you see somebody out there who was in the kind of situation you were in. What do you want to tell them right now? I want to tell them that there's help out there. You know, don't, don't think that there's nobody that cares. Just, you know, go to the Salvation Army. Go to United Way. If you have to go to DFACS, they'll tell you who can help you. If they can't help you, they will let you know who can. There's always somebody out there that can help you. And just have faith and pray, because God will help you. And good luck to you and your family. Well, thank you. Major Souther, it's always a pleasure to, to, to see you. We enjoy the work uh, that we do with you, but more importantly, I think the community is enriched because of what the Salvation Army and the vast majority of people who are engaged in it do every day. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you both for being here. For more information on the programs offered by the Salvation Army, log on to